that leave me, he said, do you want God to curse me? And he didn't stay away from my house for three days or three nights. For three years, Mr. did that. Alhamdulillah. Can you explain that verse in English to, to my brothers and sisters in Islam, please? This verse, I think the occasion of the revelation is that the Christian deputation had come from Najran. And the Holy Prophet Muhammad accommodated them in the Masjid al Nabawi, in the Mosque of the Prophet. At that time, a very humble structure, you know, mud walls and thatch roof. They lived in this Masjid for three days and three nights. They ate there, they discussed the religion there, and they slept there. And when Sunday came, it happened to be, Abu Nabi Karim, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he offered them the, the masjid for their prayers. But now, during the course of this discussion, it ended off badly. They started accusing the Prophet of lying, lying, that you know what you're saying is a lie, it's a lie. So the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that we must invoke the curse of God upon him who lies. So saying, he said, look, tomorrow morning, you bring your families and we take our families in the open air and we invoke the curse of God upon him who lies, who's talking lies. So next morning, the Prophet ﷺ was seen with, with Ali, Hazrat Ali, Bibi Fatima, and little Hassan and Hussein. They're walking out to the open field outside Medina and the Christians, they made a vanishing trick. They disappeared. So now, this was the occasion. This was the occasion. Now, you used it and it produced some effect, alhamdulillah. But there are other ways also of dealing with them. That, uh, you know, one thing, I don't know what you, you did. Whether you got the telephone numbers, those witnesses, the home address, did you get that? Did you get the home address of your visitors? You right. had them for three days, you say. They That's came. Right. That's right, because we continue talking, so they came day after day. After right, day. right, right. But did you take the house number and the telephone number? Of them. Did you? Of their house number. Yes, no. and the telephone number. No, because I have already communicated with them about Islam. No, no, no. So See, that's the I trouble. Haven't. When these people come along, man, first thing, they come into a house. What is your name? Take it down. Your telephone number? Take it down. Right. So now, the guy doesn't turn up, you go to his house. <laughs> and, and pester the life out of them, I'm telling you. Until they tell you, next time you darken my door, I'll put a bullet through you. I think we might go to a question over here. It's probably better. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Hamza. Uh, my question, uh, Sheikh Ahmed. Sheikh Ahmed say, uh, Jesus is, is not dead. We know about it. But who was not to Christ and uh, Christian people praise for who, for what or what? Could you, did you understand the question? Look, brother, we have a little bit of trouble understanding you. Stand back from the microphone a little bit and repeat your question, please. No, don't laugh. He's got a serious question. Can you just stand a little bit back and I want to ask a question. Who was nailed to cross? Okay. He'd like to know who was nailed to the cross. Because I must say, Jesus is not dead. We know about it. Muslim people, he know. Jesus is not dead, not a cross. But who come and nail it to cross. And Christian people pray for who? For wood or what? <laughs> Did you understand that? What did he say? That he was not nailed to the cross. 
the, the gentleman would like to know the Christian people say Jesus was nailed to the cross, Muslims say Jesus was not. Who was nailed to the cross? And if Jesus was not nailed to the cross, who do Christians pray to? See, the Muslim position is very clear. In Surah Maida, chapter 5, 157, Allah says, Isa ibn Maryam Rasulullah. And they said in boast that they killed Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of God. In answer to that, Allah says, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ that they didn't kill him, nor did they crucify him. Walakin should be halahum, but it was made to appear to them so. Wa inna lazina khtalafu fihi lafi shakim minhum. And those who dispute therein are full of doubts. Malahum bihim in ilm, they have no certain knowledge. Illa tiba zan, they only follow conjecture, guesswork, fiction. Wa ma katuluhu yakinan, for of a surety they killed him not. Bal Rafahullah ilay, but Allah took him up to himself. Now that's what I believe. But now, but now when the Christian comes along and he said Christ died for his sins, then I says now kulhatu. Allah says, ask him for his burhan. And he produces burhan the Bible, then I deal with the Bible according to what he says. And I prove to him that whatever you say, even if it happened, Christ didn't die, and so there was no crucifixion. And that I was proving to you on Friday. Were you here on Friday? Friday night? Good Friday, were you here? Were you here on Good Friday? No, no. Then you buy this tape, and it'll give you the whole story. This tape outside, you buy this. Thank you. Next question from the lady. Um, I was just wanting to know um, where these new Ten Commandments have come from. Because I actually attend an Anglican church and I'm not aware that the commandments have changed. As far as I know, we follow the same, commandment, the same Ten Commandments as what the Muslims do. I was just wanting to know um, where this has come about and um, when it's supposed to be introduced because I, I haven't heard anything of it yet. Those Ten Commandments came from the Anglican Church and I have the newspaper cutting of this from my local newspaper in Durban, and if you don't, if you like, you can come to my hotel and I will show it to you. I will be able to show it to you. That is coming from the Anglican Church. Is the church itself are mooting these ten command, new Ten Commandments. Not we, not the ordinary people, but the hierarchy of the church, they formulated these new Ten Commandments. I have that newspaper cutting, original newspaper. I would like to show it to you. Could you tell me, um what newspaper it was from? Was this from a newspaper in Australia? Or? No, no, in England. In England. In England. It starts from there, then it'll come to Australia as well, I take it. <laughs> Next question. Uh, good evening, Mr. Didar. Uh, before I ask question, I'd uh, like to say a few words, if it's possible. Be careful. <laughs> no, 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 not that right. I heard anybody. Uh, if I heard, uh, first of all, tonight it's a very big moment of my life. I heard some words which I wouldn't believe I would heard. Uh, if I, 10 years ago, or say 15 years ago, spoke with the majority of Muslims, I would have, if I asked them, do you believe Jesus, in Jesus Christ? The answer would be no, by majority. That means the knowledge was minimum. Shh. Tonight, I say it's a big part of my life because I heard something different. But now, we're asking the answer how to believe. Same as we get married. We get married, but our strength.